So I have a really exciting announcement, something you're not going to expect. I'm going to hike the Appalachian Trail again. Yes, I'm going to hike it again. It's going to be the third time on the trail for me. This hike is going to come with a pretty unique challenge. I've got a bunch of really cheap gear and I'm going to have a thousand dollar total hiking budget. So I want to see if I can make it from Georgia to Maine with a thousand dollars and super cheap gear. So here's a quick rundown of the gear. I purposefully not looked at it yet, so this will be my first impressions of this gear. Most of this gear is from AliExpress, and I wanted to find gear that was cheap, that was light, and hopefully that is comfortable and durable and will hold up to a through hike, and that's what this hike will kind of test. I wanna see if I can find, you know, just really rock bottom price gear that will still work, hopefully, you know, it's not going to be as good as the super expensive ultralight gear, but um, maybe it'll be good enough, or good enough for, you know, a 500 mile section, good enough for half a trail, or good enough that you um, can just make a little adjustments and go. So that's the goal, you know, because so many people I think are put off by the idea that they have to spend a ton of money um, on gear and then on their hike to be able to complete a through hike, and I think that's not true, especially if you are strategic and tactical. So that's gonna be the goal of this hike. So I'm just gonna go in, into the gear. I haven't looked at um, the gear yet. So this will be my like first impressions. I've just taken it out of the box, but otherwise I haven't really examined it. So you're gonna to get to see my reaction to this gear. So first of all, I'll show you the pack. This is a 3F ultra light um, pack. It's made in China. Most of this stuff is made in China. This is AliExpress. This pack costs $86 shipped. $86 shipped. And actually all of this stuff, it was pretty quick shipping. It all came within um, under 10 days. So this pack is two pounds. It's like 899 grams, something like that. And I bought it because it's made with um, uh, Dyneema. Like it should be waterproof. This is the same material that you see like on ultralight packs. So I'm just gonna pour some water on it right now. Let's see what happens. Look at that. I don't know if you can see, slid right off. So, yeah, it looks pretty waterproof. <laughs> now I got water on my phone. Dang it. That's pretty, pretty waterproof. You can just wipe the water right off. So we'll see how it holds up um, in actual rain, but so far so good. And you know, that material is just so strong. I've never had issues with it. So it'll come down to the stitching. Um, and I've read good things online about this 3F ultralight gear. Like they're an, an actual ultralight backpacking gear company. Looks like they're made by people who are actually hikers. So yeah. Um, I'll give it a try. There's no frame, so there's no internal frame on this pack, so that might be less comfortable. Not sure about these pockets. They look kind of small. I don't know if I can fit two water bottles on each side. Um, they've got huge hip belt pockets though, so that's kind of nice. Um, I'll, do a, I'll do a fitting later to see, because they only come in one size, so they don't come in a bunch of different sizes, but I'll see how it actually fits my body. Um, but yeah, it's got like this roll top style so you can tell they pretty much kind of copied a hyperlight pack um, but first impressions I'm pretty impressed this is $87 versus like a hyperlight I think it's $399 so pretty massive difference right there okay second piece of gear I will show you is the tent so this is a Lanshan Pro tent, Lanshan Pro One, also made by 3FUL. So yeah, like I said, this company, I think they're, you know, they're actually hikers. They're actually in the hiking space. It's not just like random Chinese knockoffs. Well, I mean, they are knockoffs of, I'm sure, the designs of um, other brands or similar. But you know, a backpack's a backpack, a tent's a tent. You can't. There's only so much innovation in that space. But I've heard really good things about this tent. And this is my first look at it. It's packaged well. So this tent is 690 grams. That's one and a half pounds. And it cost me $123 shipped. And it took, yeah, like eight to 10 days shipping. So pretty quick. The thing about these um, Lanshan One Pros is you have to seam seal it, which is not a big deal. It's like a $8 tube of seam seal. 
Um, the instructions seem to be very clear, so I'll be doing that this week. But you seam seal it, otherwise it's not completely waterproof. But for the price, I think that's uh, pretty acceptable. And let's just take a look here. Oh. Okay, so it does come with tent stakes. Let's take a look. How are these tent stakes? They feel a little heavy, but I don't know. This looks like the same stuff that gets shipped with like Nemo Hornet um, fly creeks. So yeah, I should probably actually buy some titanium tent stakes because they're super cheap <laughs> on AliExpress. So those are the tent stakes and here's the tent. It's a, uh, is it single wall or double wall? I don't even know. Okay, it looks like it's all one piece. It's a trekking pole tent. And I actually don't know if I have a trekking pole here at home to set this up with. Yeah, it looks like it's all single piece. So you've got the, you know, the roof of the tent. Um, you've got the bottom of the tent, the bathtub. Those are both, I believe, still nylon, so um, waterproof, but they'll stretch when they get wet, so that'll be the main downside. And then, where's the opening? Okay, so here's like the rain fly opening, and I mean, first glance, it looks good. Like, this really reminds me of a Nemo Hornet right now. Except this is not freestanding. You know, it's a trekking pole tent. I believe it requires one, one trekking pole to set up. And yeah, one and a half pounds, 123 bucks. Again, massive savings because if you're buying a, you know, one and a half pound like Z-Pax, Hyperlite, um, tarp tent, any of those, it's going to run you at least $400. A lot of them are like five, six hundred dollars anymore. So that's pretty incredible. And I think the reviews online for this Lanshan are really good. So I'm, I'm confident in this tent. Okay, so here's my sleeping pad. This is a wide C. And it looks like wide C is another one of those, like they actually manufacture backpacking equipment. Uh, it's not just random knockoff stuff. So this is their version of the, like the Z-Lite um, little pad. And this was $14. <laughs> uh, it looks like a Z-Lite. It might, it feels like it's a little more thin than like the Z-Lites that I'm used to. It's comfortable. Yeah, I just went and lay down on this. I think it's comfortable. I think it'll work on the AT. It's not gonna be too cold. That's why I chose the AT to do this experiment on because uh, somewhere on the AT, there is lots of room for error and I'm not gonna freeze to death at night. So I'll probably cut this down. I don't need this as a full, what is this? This is like six, six feet. So I don't need that much of a pad. All right, so, so next thing I got some shoes. These are knockoff hookahs, look at that. It says hoax, H-O-K-Z. So, uh, not too impressed looking at it, actually. Ooh, the tread, this tread, this is not gonna work. Look at this tread. It's basically non-existent. This tread, I'm definitely gonna fall and slip in the mud on the AT uh, when it's raining with these shoes and how steep that trail is. So, not impressed with these shoes. I ordered the size 13. Um, yeah, they're also too small, so they don't fit my feet. <laughs> uh, not impressed with these shoes. They were, these were 23.56 shipped. So, I mean, I'm not out much, but yeah. This is like, you know, just a cheap knockoff. This is not some shoe company, trail running shoe company. This is somebody trying to knock off hokas, calling them hopes, and no good. That tread is no good. I tried a different pair. These are, um, I thought these might be like a legit trail runner, maybe like a, you know, not a knockoff, just a trail runner from China, but also looks pretty terrible, and they're tiny. Like, 
These are supposed to be a size 13. Um, that's not gonna fit my foot at all. Not even close. I guess I can try. But, uh, yeah, I can't even get my foot in that shoe. So that's definitely not gonna work. The tread is a little more aggressive, but yeah, these are 28 bucks shipped. So, so yeah, that's like 50 bucks down the drain, but the lesson learned is don't buy shoes from China. One, the sizing is all over the place apparently, and the quality just is really terrible. So um, I think I might look at used shoes or see if there's some kind of brands like at Walmart or something that are a little bit better, but yeah, these are not going to work. All right, what else do I have? Ooh, this, I'm excited for this. This is a wide C, 1300 milliliter titanium pot. Yeah, this is good, this is good stuff. Because titanium is one of those things that's pretty expensive uh, in the US. And you know, it's just a piece of metal. So this pot was $19. And I like it because it's flat. You know, it's not a big tall thing. Um, it's, yeah, it's got a lid. It's got a little handle. It's got, I don't know what this is for, but it's got, oh. Yeah, so it's got like a little, another little handle over here. Um, and it's super lightweight. This is titanium. I'm not sure what the weight comes in at, but it's like, I don't know, 100 grams, 150 grams, if that. So super lightweight, nice pot. I guess we'll see if it holds up. It should. It's metal. It's a piece of titanium. So um, 19 bucks. Super impressed by that. That's going to run you at least 50, probably closer to like 70, if you can find a 1300 milliliter wide pot like this, which, yeah, all the pots in the U.S. are like thin and tall, and their volume is pretty low which I need big volume, I wanna cook lots of food. So this is, I'm really happy with this pot, $19. So to pair with that pot, I got a BRS stove. So this is pretty popular already stateside on Amazon, but if you get it on AliExpress, it's even cheaper. So this was $12.96 shipped, $12.96 shipped for this stove. And it's just a tiny little guy, I think it's um, 15 grams, way lighter than a pocket rocket. And an MSR Pocket Rocket's gonna run you like, I think it's $100 or more for the stove and the pot combo. So this stove plus this pot is what, like $32 together? So, you know, pretty massive savings. And just lighter, super light, 15 grams, that's it. Look at that. All right, the next thing I'm excited about is a sleeping bag. So I'm actually gonna try and make my own sleeping bag, sleeping quilt as well, but I thought I'd give this a shot. This is a wide C, um, 400 down sleep bag. So on their website, they said it's rated to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's again, super light. Like this is like one and a half pounds. So super, super light. Um, and it's supposed to be all down, like it's not synthetic. This is actually uh, duck or goose down. So here's the sleeping bag. Uh, or actually, they call it a quilt online, I think. Because you can unzip all of this right here, open it up fully, but it looks like, so yeah, there's a zipper that runs the length of this all the way down so you can close it all the way up like a sleeping bag. Um, it's pretty wide. Look at that. Look how wide that is. But yeah, it's not a ton of loft. It's also been sitting in that bag. I'm going to let this kind of air out, see how much lofts up. Uh, it's definitely noticeably less loft than my like 30 degree catabatic bag. Um, but if this is rated to 40 degrees, this should be fine for the Appalachian Trail. I'm gonna be starting um, late May. So, you know, summer on the AT, 40 degrees is pretty ideal. So at one and a half pounds, uh, pretty amazing. And the price, this is a crazy price. So this is $44, 44, 46 shipped. Um, and that's pretty wild because an ultralight quilt is gonna run, I don't know what they are. I haven't bought one for a while, but two, three, $400. Um, but $44, and if it works, that'll be, that'll be pretty incredible because 
you know, one and a half pounds, $44. Uh, only thing is, we'll see if it can keep me warm on the trail. So next thing, Nature Hike sleeping bag liner. I wanted to try this because, you know, I'm not convinced that on the rating of that um, quilt. So I wanted to see if this liner could improve my uh, sleep quality. But actually, this feels like nothing at all. <laughs> like maybe this would be a good liner just to keep your bag dry or clean or a little more comfortable. But what did it cost? Um, it cost $19, so actually kind of pricey relative to, you know, like the sleeping bag. But um, yeah, this kind of makes me think of one of those like summer bag liners where it's more just to keep you comfortable and keep your bag clean. Uh, but it's also very light, like it packs down super small and it is very light. It fits into this little bag. Let's see, does it? It's 128 grams, so uh, I think this will be worth trying in the beginning to see if I need it, if I like it. If not, I can put it in a hiker box and it was $20 experiment, so not a big deal. Okay, so the next thing I have is a puffy. I'm actually pretty excited about this because this puffy is $18.99. And it's fairly light. It's supposed to be all down, like filled with actual down and not synthetic. So I ordered an XXL because Asian sizes, you gotta go like one to two sizes up. I might've got a triple XL. <laughs> it doesn't say on here, but uh, yeah, so far it looks good. I mean, it's got a decent amount of loft and it's, it's light, it's under, I don't know what it is, but it's under eight ounces. It says, yeah, it says it's filled with white duck down and uh, 400, so 400 whatever, white duck down, fits well. Um, zippers look fine, sewing looks fine. Well, let's see if it'll zip, okay, it zips. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. And for under $20 for brand new puffy. That's pretty good. That's, that's incredibly good, actually. <laughs> wow. I mean, if you stuck like a Patagonia brand on here, and you didn't look too closely at the sewing, you could probably fool a lot of people. So, I think that will work. That will keep me warm. Pretty impressed by this, this puffy. And this combined with that sleeping bag, I think that'll be more than enough warmth to sleep comfortably at night on the AT in the summer, and that means that's a $60 sleep system. So now, trowels. So I think titanium is one of the best deals from AliExpress, because uh, it's just a piece of metal, you can't really mess that up. I thought this was gonna be a lot bigger. <laughs> this was $3.50. Um, I don't think that's gonna work, that's too small. But this trowel, like, you could kill a freaking bear with this trowel. I've used, I think I've had one exactly like this, somebody just, branded it themselves and they sold it on Amazon for like 30 bucks, but this was $7, this was $3.50, and this would be a nice titanium trowel. And the weird thing is, airport security, they never pit, never make me get rid of these. I don't think titanium shows up on their scanners. So I'm gonna carry this in my carry-on. And uh, yeah, this will work very well as a trowel, and it was $7. Uh, NU25, Nightcore. Um, it looks like it's Chinese branded. You know, it's got Chinese characters on here, but otherwise it should be the exact same product. And this one cost me, so this cost me $26.72 shipped, whereas on Amazon, I believe they start off at $35. So you save 10 bucks by buying it from AliExpress. So this is the shock cord version as well. And it's nice, it's a USB-C charger, so I don't have to carry two different charging cords anymore, which will be hugely helpful on the trail. Yeah, but here we go. It works. Now, how do you turn it off? Okay, there you go. <laughs> Nightcore. Uh, should work fine. I've always used Nightcores on the trail. Maybe in the beginning I'll take uh, an extra one of my night cores just to be safe, make sure this works, but should be good. Um, you know, night core, that's the way to go for headlamps. And 25 bucks, this is rechargeable, so you don't have to deal with batteries. 
So this is supposed to be a waterproof jacket. It was like seven dollars. I the listing I wasn't too sure. I don't know. I don't know if this is actually going to be waterproof. Um, here, I'll just dump some more water on it real quick. And actually, I'll let it sit. Okay, so it's definitely hydrophobic. Like, the water is beating up on it. It's not soaking through it. Yeah. Huh. I'll have to wear this a little bit more, like, in the shower, see if it's actually waterproof and if it will maintain its waterproofness. But so far, it looks fine. Um, let's see if it fits me. Again, I ordered, this is an XL. <laughs> Probably should have got a double XL because this is a little bit snug. Yeah, we'll see if it's actually waterproof. Because if it is, um, $7 rain jacket, that's pretty good. So I got this little towel. Uh, it's a quick dry towel. And it was $3.50. Because I figure if I'm not going to be spending a lot of money, I'm not going to be staying in hotels and hostels as much. So I'm going to be doing like more stream baths and those sorts of things to keep myself clean so a little towel will be handy um, this is very light i think it's under 50 grams packs down super small uh, yeah looks looks fine so this is not part of the budget gear these are ambra's glasses they sent me some new ones but i enjoy them and i figure you don't need me to tell you what cheap sunglasses to buy so i like these i have still never lost a pair of ambra's to date they just sit around my neck so those are pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the inside of this pack. Oh, they've got a little like inner dry bag looks like, so I could put electronics or things you don't want to get wet. Well, no, no, this is a mesh screen, but that's kind of nice, a little organizational inside drawer inside the pack. So this is what the pack looks like. And it should have plenty of room to fit all of my crap. I think it's, what is it? Is it a 40 liter plus 16 on the outsides? Is what they say. Let's see if I can read this Chinese sticker. 46 liter plus 10 liter. So 46 liter interior. And I'm sure if you don't roll, if you like roll it all the way to the top, you're gonna carry more than 46 liter. Uh, for these kind of bags, they, you know, when they say like 50 liter, 40 liter, it means when it's kind of rolled down like that, you know, you give it several rolls. So 46 liter interior, 10 liters on the outside pockets. Um, yeah, big old hip belt pockets. So I'm excited to test this gear out. So in total, all of this gear, not including the shoes, is $383.62. So that's $383 for a Dyneema backpack for a one and a half pound 40 degree sleeping bag for a one and a half pound tent. I think ironically this setup, this setup that's under $400 is going to be lighter for me than my setup um, that was on the calendar year, which, you know, if I had paid for all of that gear, it would have been thousands of dollars. So that's, uh, this will be really interesting to see how this gear holds up, see whether it works, see whether it's comfortable, whether I hate it. But if it works, I mean, this is pretty game changing. For the cost, like, the Hyperlite pack alone costs more than all of this entire kit right here. Um, so that will make backpacking so much more accessible for people. So I'm pretty excited for the summer. Be sure to hit subscribe. I'm going to be doing, you know, video blogs again. Be sure to subscribe on Instagram. I'll be posting, you know, lots of updates on there as we go. And I'll just be doing little, little updates. You know, how's the gear going? How's the trail going? You know, how, uh, yeah, how's it going? Hiking the Appalachian Trail for the third time. <laughs>